allergies. So make sure you don't crash while you're doing this, Chad. I'm not driving. Oh, you're not? You're on the side of the road? Sure. Sure. Okay. Where are you headed? Baltimore. Baltimore. You better be. That's Chad Summers. I'm Greg De Palma. And that's John Hardoon. As we talk Preakness Stakes 2024 here on our Horsepower PSN YouTube channel. I uh, want to thank everybody uh, for the last couple of weeks. We've had some really good uh, action as far as traffic. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions or comments, just keep them coming. Obviously, we want to get those subscriptions up to 1,000. That's our goal. And um, I think we have a reasonable goal for the Breeders' Cup to reach 1,000 subscribers. So keep in mind, if we reach 1,000... What's that? How about Belmont State? Yeah. yeah. That's a little... Uh, that's, that's, that's some goal. Uh, but anyway, the Breeders' Cup, if we can get there, keep that keep this in mind. That means all of our shows, all of our main shows will be available for free here on YouTube as soon as we record them. And we're going to be doing some live shows as well. So the quicker we get to the 1,000, the better. And that involves everybody out there, including the viewers. We are still going to keep, though, uh, an opportunity for uh, all of our viewers to have bonus material, bonus content. We'll update that as we move along here during the summer. But for right now, just uh, hit that subscribe button, and that's the most important thing. Okay, so uh, we've got three races we're going to talk about today. Obviously, the Preakness is one of them. We've got the Black Eyed Susan that's on Friday, and then we have a bonus race that's only available for our uh, Patreon members, and that is going to be the Sir Barton Stakes, which will take place uh, on Saturday. That's the 10th race. We should let everybody know, John, a couple of notes. First of all, the weather. Uh, it looks like the weather is going to be an impact, especially on Saturday. Yeah, Friday, 7% chance of rain. Saturday, 90% chance of rain. That's thunder. That's thunder where? <laughs> That's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, and, and and is it going to be some rain on Friday, possibly, too, for the Black Eyed? I said 7% chance. So right, I would so not so much. That's okay. enough. Yeah. All right. So, first off, we are going to uh, quickly just uh, talk about uh, last week because Chad had a good double uh, hitting a both. Double. Yes. So, good going there, Chad. Um, matter of fact, you had the exacta as well in the sixth race, uh, hitting the winner and the exacta in that one. Uh, and that was the six horse antiquarian. So what'd you think about antiquarian's win? He ran well. He, he ran a nine on the sheets, I believe. Let me check. I think it was a nine. Yep, that would have been a new top. Uh, that means he's coming from a 15 to an 11 to a nine. And that was into Peter Pan. And that was, of course, a, a three year old race. So uh, what's next for antiquarian, Chad? Could be the Belmont, I guess. I'm not hearing Chad. Me neither. So I filled in the answer for him. All right. I think he's going to go in the Belmont, but I don't know. Oh, the Belmont Stakes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, again, uh, that's the line is looking really nice for Antiquarian. So he, that ran was, a, he ran a seven. Is that what I told you? He ran, oh, he ran you, you said nine originally. Uh, yeah, was, I'm just looking it up. He ran a seven. Even better. Well, I don't know about that. Well, he would have been better off running the nine first. Yeah, that's true. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. So what did you think about Antiquarian's Peter Pan win, Chad? And what's next for him, you think? Well, first, I mean, after the scratches, I was shocked that we got five to one. That was a gift. He's a he's a nice horse, and I think the Belmont Stakes, especially this year at a mile and a quarter distance, not the mile and a half, uh, to play right with his wheelhouse. And what's next? Do you think Belmont said, potentially? Belmont Stakes. The Belmont Stakes. So that's definite. Okay. Yes. Keep an eye on him. Nothing is definite. As we found out this morning, late breaking news. Well, we'll tease everybody on that. So keep in uh, mind, we've got some late breaking news on a scratch. That, okay. Go yeah, on. that's uh, too bad it's not live. Yeah. Uh, and then, Chad, you hit with the seventh uh, with that one um, after the Peter Pan, I believe. What was that? The Man of War. Uh, and you had the winner in that race that was Silver Knot. Yeah, he's, he's, he's getting better and better since the yellow one. Well done, Chadwick. Well, Just that's keep the, uh, keep the momentum going into Pimlico. Extreme measures—they better work when you when you go to that route. Okay, 
let's go ahead and talk about uh, the triple card here on the show today. We're starting off with Friday's big race at Pimlico. Uh, of course, the Black Eyed Susan. This is a mile and an eighth, and this will go off about quarter to six on Friday. Again, the weather should be okay. Uh, and as far as uh, the favorites, we have a five to two shot Corposo. That's the seven horse. And then we also have uh, a, a four to one shot Lemon Muffin and a seven to two shot Recharge. So those are the top contenders for this race. Let's start uh, with the first horse in the race. That's Jeannie Marie John. And what's decent about Jeannie Marie is, is that uh, she, she's improving each time out. Problem is her last race was a 17. So she has a long way to go. Yeah, the trainer does a terrific job, the Butch Reed, and he's got Michael Sanchez coming to ride, who's a top young rider in the country, but I think he's a little slow. She's a little slow. Not only is she a little slow, she's a little short. So she's not tall enough to ride the roller coaster. She's not tall enough to win the black on the That's the first. Okay. okay. Next up, uh, we have the two horse, and that is a 10 to 1 shot, Ringy Dingy. Ringy Dingy, uh, Katie Davis. I don't remember the last time I ever mentioned Katie Davis on this show, but that's, uh, I guess, what, is she a Pimlico rider? No, she rides in New York. She's the brother of, uh, the sister of Robbie Davis and Jackie Davis and the daughter of Robbie Davis. So oh. she rides the whole winter. Okay. Well, she's on a, she's on a, a, a dungy dungy horse because this horse uh, has been pretty slow. Yeah, he has no, she has no chance. Agree, Chad? Or is this your top pick? Okay. Next up, a four to one shot. Lemon Muffin. And Pratt's on board for the first time. So that's big. This is a Team Way Lucas horse coming off a 22, unfortunately. The, she had back to back 15s to start the year. But since then, John, a 17 and a 22. The 22 was in the Kentucky Oaks when the horse did nothing. You can't bet her because of the odds. I mean, she's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Four to one. I mean, I understand it's first time Pratt. It's a major upgrade uh, jockey wise. However, I mean, if you at four to one, you can't possibly think of playing this horse. Look, the, the thing with this is two things. Like you said, it's a big, big jockey upgrade. I thought her her win three back was very good. She comes out of a fantasy where Torpedo Anna was the winner that day and went on to win the Kentucky Oaks. She lost her race. We talked about this when we did the Kentucky Oaks. She lost her race. She won 15-2 the, the week before. So to me, you throw that race out. She thankfully hasn't worked since then. Lucas is, is has no problem bringing horses back in two weeks. He does it with almost all his horses on the regular. And so for that reason, the horse is a, is a logical contender. I guess four to one is light. I think she'll drift up. I think the line's wrong on the the next couple of horses we'll talk about. So I think she'll end up going off at six or seven to one, eight to one. And I think she, she could use her underneath. All right. This horse, uh, Lemon Muffin, has lost by a combined 27 lengths the last two races since breaking her maiden in that race at Oakland Park in uh February. Okay, next up, the four. Call another play. An eight to one shot. And uh, this horse is uh, an interesting uh, play here, John, because the odds are good. Uh, the sheet line is is really good this year from a 27 to a 15. Better each time. Uh, steady better as well, uh, which is just the way you want to see it. Yeah, I like playing hometown horses in these kind of races. This horse, uh, Laurel, is his home. So, you know, is her home, I should say. Sort so, of, kind of. I'm sorry? But she trains at Fair Hill. It's not like she yeah, can okay, train Laurel Service. Sure, but she's, you know, Trimbetta's a hometown guy. The, the horse certainly has a shot, especially at 8-1. to one, She's a must-use. So what is the difference, though, if you like her that you don't like the one horse when they were separated by a half a length last night? Because one horse is moving forward, and the other horse, I think, hasn't gotten to that point yet. That's all. Okay. Look, this horse was offered for forty thousand dollars tag, three starts back, four starts back. I, I, I don't think. I don't think she's been. So you don't like her? No. Okay. Next. 
Gunsong, 9-2, to two, the 5, Velasquez on board, 10 in February in that win. Uh, then a 15 last time out in the grade 2 race. So, um, yeah, 9-2 to two again. Uh, that's uh, it's a little bit low, but I guess that's for the 10. Well, she's a lot better than Lemon Muffin, who's 4-1. to one. You know, I mean, it's Mark Henning. The horse has five career starts. It's a gun runner. She's fine. I think she's okay. She fits. Look, she's going to be my top pick. I, it comes with a little bit of a asterisk, I guess. She was so good at Gold Street. When she was second behind the top Fletcher Philly that came back and won the Ashland. And then she won the allowance race. And she was nominated to the Triple Crown. She could have run on the Derby or the Freak. I, I would have thought she would be kind of a layup in this spot. Unfortunately... That last race, you can't really make a lot of excuses for. It was a tough race, I get it, but she sat the she sat the white trip and she stopped. Now, normally I would be very very concerned that I wouldn't think I would think I'll wait and see a thrill for that next start. But if you look at her work camp since then, they gave her three and a half weeks off. She came back, she breezed the bullet in Florida, came up to New York, breezed well, and then comes in with another bullet into this race. I mean, Mark Hennings had a lot of nice horses, a former Dwayne Lucas employee. He knows how to, how to win these kind of races, even though it's been a while since he's running one. And I think that she's probably the best horse in the race. I don't know. I didn't study the sheets per se, but would you say the 10? Is, is that the best number in the race? Yes. Yes, yeah, tied so for the best. If, if she can get back to that, then she's the logical contender. She's fine. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the but si- just keep in mind one thing, Chad. The 10 that she ran at Gulfstream was around one turn. That doesn't right. mean anything I understand because she's had a gun run and could probably run all day. I'm just pointing it out. No, it makes sense. And also, I'm sure that was with Lasix as well. Yes. The 6. Yes. Who could ask for Mo? Uh, Saez on board for the first time. A very steady sheet line uh, over, his, over her career. Uh, she was stuck on 17 for a while, but at least she's gone from a 20 to a 16 over five races. She's okay. She's a little slow, and uh, she would have to make a forward move, and the price isn't that enticing at 6-1. to one. Look, the barn was very, very high on her. When she broke the mate, they thought that she could win the Oaks. And she's been disappointing. There's no other way really around it. I mean, she was... Flat Tampa came back and ran just so so, and they put blinkers on. But Chuck McGee, who's one of the greatest trainers of all time, he's six percent first time blinkers. So it's more of an act of desperation than an act of let's pay attention to it. That being said, there's not a ton of speed in this race. Louis Sayas might fit this horse best, but it's also the sixth rider in six starts for this building. Yeah, that's bad news, I guess, right? You just I mean, you just want you you want some consistency. You want you want somebody that knows the horse and knows the idiots and she's you have John Velasquez riding gun pilot or whatever her name is. And, gun gun gun. and, and she's he's been aboard. He knows her. He knows what to expect. You know, you're better second time riding, let alone fourth time riding. And you know, Louis a great rider, and he wins a lot with horses he doesn't know. But you prefer that there's a little bit of a familiarity with the horses. Okay, next up is the seven, Corposo, the morning line favorite at five to two. Gaffleone on board for the first time, and this horse uh, uh, only three races, but uh, the numbers are uh, pretty solid so far. Fifteen, then a ten. Uh, bounced a little bit to a 12 in the grade two uh, Oaks race at Santa Anita, John. So uh, big problem is the odds. Well, but she's also the fastest horse in the race, clearly. And she gets a major, major rider change to Gaffleone. This is going to be my top pick. I understand she's probably going to be the favorite, but I'm going to have to find some price horses to put underneath, I guess. I'm not sure she goes up as the favorite. I'm actually surprised she's the morning line favorite. I mean, she lightly raced. She's only run three times. And it wasn't like she was right there. She was a distance third in the Santa Cruz. Look, she tries. She's a homebred for Nick Casada's slam dunk racing. And I think she's a cool horse. And I think she's a hard trier. 
but I don't know talent wise if she's as good as Mark Tank's horse or Chuck's horse. Okay. Then last uh, is Recharge, the eight horse, the seven to two shot. You got uh, Rosario on board. Uh, he was on board for the win, the last win for this horse uh, back in February. He ran a 16 in that race, which actually was the best sheet number we have so far for Recharge, coming off a 17 in the grade two race at Oakland Park. Yeah, but she's seven to two. She's seven to two, and she's slow, and she's breaking from the outside post. I don't want any part of this horse at seven to two. This my opinion. The, the only thing with this filly is she finds herself in front, which Aston horses seem to excel at when they're when they're given that opportunity. I I don't know if she's good enough. I really don't know if she really wants to go a mile and an eight. But she comes out of the race where she was third behind the Kentucky Oaks one. So it's a key race that she comes out of. But she just stopped last time. There really was no true excuse. They didn't go super fast. I just feel like she'll find herself loose on the lead, and she could get great. All right, time for picks. John, uh, you like the seven. I'm playing exact to seven over one, four, five. Seven, that's Corposo over the one, Gina Marie, the four, call another play, and the five, gun song. Seven with one, four, five. Chad, you like the five, gun song. Yeah, I'm going to take gun song. I'll play uh, the favorite underneath with uh, Recharge. Seven and eight. Five, seven, and eight for Chad. And I'm going to go ahead uh, with the four. Call another play. And uh, I'll, do, using I'll, the I'll do the four with the five. All right. No seven? No seven? No, no seven. Cold exact, the four, five. Okay. Cold, cold, cold. Yeah, there right. you go. You might want to put it in the microwave and try and protect yourself. Make yeah. Sure you put the yeah, microwaves, they suck. All right, so that's Black Eyed Susan. And now we turn to Preakness Day. Uh, that's uh, this upcoming Saturday, and that is the May, uh, the 18th of May at Pimlico. And we are going to start with the big one, the Preakness Stakes. And uh, for uh, Patreon members only, stay tuned because we are going to have the bonus race from Pimlico, uh, we're going to talk about as well. First off, though, it's the big one. And, John, uh, just a little bit of a, of a note here, because I don't think we mentioned this yet, so go ahead and update. I'm sure most of the viewers have heard this already, but just in case they haven't. Smooth is scratched, and it's a bad thing if you wanted to play against Smooth, because all the odds will now be cut in half for the most part. So I'm upset. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to lie, John. Well, I wanted to play against him. Him, yes, so I right. it's not I... I don't hear you, Chad. You broke up. Chad? Okay. Go no. ahead, Chad. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. yes, we hear you. Oh, I said I'm not complaining that he's out because to me, I think he was the horse to beat. I wanted to play against him. But he's the best horse in the race. I understand, but the odds now, if you were betting an 8-1 to one chance, yes. you're going to get 7 yes, to but two. I'll take half the odds to okay. not have to be moved. Okay. All, All right. right. So no no Bob Baffert then in this race, I right? I But yep. Muth is fresh, and Baffert dominates this race. Oh, actually, okay. he does have a horse. Well, they, they left him another. If you like it. Baffert and you think he dominates the race, well, he left you another horse in the race. So. Okay. Yes, I All right. Use my well, imagination to play that one. Okay. Yes, let's do that. Uh, let's start uh, with the one Mugatu. Mugatu has been on synthetic an awful lot over uh, his career, and taking a look at dirt, it's only happened a few times. Last time out, it was in the bluegrass, finished fifth, ran a fourteen. He was also number twenty-one in the Belmont in the uh, Kentucky Derby. He never got in. So this is, he gets in here, obviously, but I think he's a little slow. I don't like. Him. Okay, for people that want to use that as a crutch, as, as that's why they're going to play him in the Preakness, because he almost got in the Derby. The only reason he almost got in the Derby is because he's the only other one that entered. He exactly. Would, he would have qualified on points. He was the 47th on points. The horse hasn't hit the board in real race, and he's not good enough. No, and he's got no shot. Exactly. I don't think I don't think he can hit the board. Uncle I Head. 
Uncle Heavy is also 20 to 1. This is Irad Ortiz Jr.'s ride. Uh, Uncle Heavy uh, ran a two, excuse me, a 12 in the win at the Withers. That was in February. Came back in the wood, running a disappointing fifth and a 14 on the sheet line. He did have trouble in his last race, so you could actually read it as the 12 two starts back, and then he had some trouble. One thing you know, the 12 was run on a wet track, so he certainly doesn't mind the track being sloppy. You know, he has somewhat, uh, he has a small shot to hit the board at best. Look, he's my he's my long shot play here. One, I know he's going to get the distance. Okay, he has no problem stretching out. He was very very good when he won the Withers at a mile and thing. After the Withers, because the horse tested positive for her, he's not him, a different horse. He was sent to the farm. He wasn't allowed to go back to parks. It messed up his training. He was off for three weeks, and. To to get ready for the next race, to get ready for the Derby, nothing can go wrong. When that happens, it just changes everything. And I know Butch Reed tried to spin it and said, oh, well, he needed a friend. It, it's bullshit. Like, it, it's not what he wanted. And now he can train properly into the break. I like this source at a little bit of a price. The wood, everything went wrong. He wasn't prepared. He wasn't ready. And then the horse fell down right in front of him which kind of stopped his leg run that he makes the touch. I think he's a plus shoes underneath. I don't think he can win, but I think he can definitely fit at second or third. Yeah, and the, and the bonus of the fact that he's got those two wins on off tracks, so that's definitely going to help. Okay, and you got Everett Ortiz Jr. for the first time. Okay, next up is Catching Freedom. And uh, this looks like a real good contender here because Catching Freedom's sheet line is uh, pretty solid. Uh, going from a 15 to a 9. Matter of fact, ran back-to-back 9s, -back winning the Louisiana Derby, finishing 4th in the Kentucky Derby. Pratt's on board for the third time as well, John. And you're getting 6-1, to one, which isn't too bad. You're getting 6-1 to one when Muth was in the race. Muth is no longer in the race. I don't like this horse here. He's never done anything wrong, but the, he did something wrong. He's coming back on two weeks now. He's one of the three horses in this race that ran in the Derby last time out. Catching Freedom, Mystic Dan, and Just Steel. I want to play against all those horses that are coming back on two weeks. I don't like them. The one thing I'll say is he, Brad Cox. He can win. He can win, but I don't like him. Hey, Brad Cox has run one time in the last five years, back in two weeks, on a greatest stake race, and the horse won it was Tony Port in the Lexington. That being said, I don't, I never like this horse. I don't love this horse. Um, I'm not sure this is Brad's decision so much as the owners want to run a free. All right. And I think Brad hasn't super fit. Too much with him. Not a race that was targeted. Okay. Let's go to the five. Yes, Mystic no, Dan, Derby winner, coming off a nine in that race, John. So this, uh, if you look at his last uh, five races, he's basically been improving from a 22 to a nine. Last three races are a 10, 10, and a nine. Yeah, well, he won the Derby last time out with an unbelievable ride and everything else that goes with it. But this is the first time that he's coming back close since last year. When he ran the 12, followed by the 22. He's going to be an underlay. He's going to be a short price. You're not going to get anywhere near the 18 to 1 that he was in the Derby. And for that reason, I, I know he's going backwards. He's not going forward. So when I have a short price horse that I know is going to regress, why would I want to play him? I don't like him. If it's a sloppy track, you have to use him. He loves the spot. Okay. The interesting thing to me, and John, you tell me about this. He seems to be a horse that loves the ramp. The two wins that were just dynamic, the Derby and the, the Southwest in Arkansas, he made this huge move up the fence. Some horses like to be outside. Some horses like to be inside. If I'm riding this race and riding any other horse not named Mystic Dan, I'm not letting this horse up the inside. And if he doesn't come up the inside, we'll see how good he is. He's the Derby winner. It was a great ride from Brian. It was well prepared by Kenny McPeak. But I think this horse wants to be on the rails. And in post five, 
I don't know that he's going to get over if post every other jockey now. rides a smart race. It's post four now. The his problem is he's got Irod Ortiz in front of him, and he's not letting him get the wood. So. I would think so. Six sees the gray. This is back. We got back to back D Wayne Lucas horses here with sees the gray and just deal. They're both 15 to one. Uh, sees the gray. The best uh, sheet line we have is a 13. He's run that three times this year, including in the Pat Day mile win uh, in uh, May. And just steel has got Rosario on board uh, coming off uh, a nothing burger at the Derby before that. Uh, was looking pretty good with a 13, 12, 13, and of course had the big seven at the Arkansas Derby finishing second. Which one of these two long shots from D. Wayne Lucas do you prefer, John? If I had to pick one, it would probably be, um, probably be, I don't like either one of them. They both ran on Derby <laughs> Day. Seize the Gray ran on Derby Day in the Pat Mile, the race, be, a couple of races before the Derby, and Just Steele ran in the Derby. So, again, they're back on two weeks. I don't like either one of them. If I had to pick one, it would probably be Seize the Great. By the I'm, way, Just I'm Steel's making... getting also a rider switch. He got rid of his uh, of uh, Smusen and he's putting Joel Rosario on. So, I don't know. Look, two things. One, I'll make a, a, a wager right now, John. Seize the Great will go off at 10 to 1 or less. Whoa. Yeah, it's okay. my race. I know why. 728 people for right. my race horse. <laughs> right. Why? Because my race horse owns this horse, and that <laughs> they sell micro shares. You could buy a, You could be a horse owner, Greg, for like twenty dollars. You get like one hair on the horse's head. <laughs> yeah, that's but okay. That's what you get for the twenty dollars, and everybody bets two dollars. So there's literally <laughs> thousands of people involved with this horse because they all and have they tell their friends and they tell their friends. To their friends, exactly. So anyway, I don't like the horse, but I just I would I do want to watch the odds. Here's the thing on Just Steel. It was an awful ride at the Derby. It was. Like he was too was close. What kid. was he doing up there? It was way too. He was. Yeah, I right. agree. Right. So if you want the if you want the horse to come from behind, who's the first jockey you're going to call? Rosario. So there you go. There I you think are. this horse is 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 a must use. He's won this race before. He, this is not necessarily Oxbow like, but. I just feel like this horse, I'm tossing out the last race. I have no idea what he was doing. He it looked like he was, he was trying to help out his dad. It didn't look like he was trying to win the race. Well, I just, he could I, have been riding I, shotgun for his dad. He was outside of him. I thought he was going to have to, like, <laughs> roll a derby, and someone's going to come alongside, and he'd make a right. <laughs> but to me, I, th I think Rosario is the right jockey for this horse. He's going to the Hall of Fame this year, and he's got a shot to hit the board. By the way, he's riding very well now. The last couple of weeks, he's really be on, been on top of his game. Greg, you asked me who I like better. Chad talked me into just steal. He's right. I'm wrong. Forgets he's the great. All right. Well, hey, he's got the better sheet numbers. So Yeah. Uh, the next two are good contenders, especially Tuscan Gold. An 8-1 to one shot with Gaffleone on board. This is a Chad Brown trained horse here. And uh, Tuscan Gold, uh, we talked about him possibly. What did he back out of the Peter Pan last week? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the, I mean, I think that's a really good move. He gets an extra week off. He ran an eight, and that's important because he ran an eight, which was a six-point new top. So that extra week will help uh, when he ran third in the Louisiana Derby. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, eight to one, Gaffleone, an eight last time out, Tuscan Gold. What do you think about the eight, John? This is my top selection. I, lo I love this horse at eight to one. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to get seven to two or four to one now, but I like this horse. And uh, Gaffleone's going to win this race for Chad Brown. I'm with I'm with John. That's my top pick as well. I think he's it was smart. You know, I don't think he, he, I guess he could have maybe backdoored with the Derby uh, once the other horse got in the race. But passing on the Peter Pan, pointing for the Preakness, the race that Chad Brown's won twice. It's a small field. The horse only run three times. He needs the experience. So. For me, this is a horse who's just getting better and better. Comes out of a good race at Fairgrounds, the same business. And he's and fresh. He's a logical, fresh horse. I, I think he's the horse to beat. The, and then the nine is Imagination, a six to one shot, coming off a 10 in the Santa Anita Derby, ran second in that race. 
Uh, the, the sheet numbers have been really consistent and very good. I never had a bad race, ranging from a 13 to an 8. Ran an 8 in that race in February at Santa Anita, John. So that's the thing that really sticks out for Bob Baffert's imagination. This is a good horse. The problem with this horse is he really has hang in him because he had no excuse to lose the last race. And the race three starts back. I bet him that day, and he had no excuse really to lose that race either. It looks I swear, he waits on horses, Chad. Watch the replays. He waits on horses. Again. No, I, I agree with oh, you. Oh, okay. There is nothing wrong with this horse at all, except, I'm, you know, I just I have a bad taste about this horse. But that's it. He's fine. I'm using him for sure. But I'm uh, my top selection is the eight. Look, I agree with everything you said, John. He's a must-use in all your numbers, uh, but he's tough to trust on top. All right, so we all are going with the eight, Tuscan Gold. So now uh, let's try to make some money with the exactors. So, John? Eight with 279, Uncle Heavy, Just Steel, and Imagination under the eight. You can flip it around a little bit if you want, but th that's the numbers I like. Eight with 279. John, it's been a while since we said this, but we're in a complete agreement. Oh, my God, that's great news. <laughs> just absolutely complete agreement. Same, uh, same winner, same pick, same everything. Okay. Well, Great. even if I was going to uh, say the same thing, it, there's no way I would at this point. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that to <laughs> Thanks us. Thanks for your confidence in us. No, it would be. I'd be. I'd be putting a big whammo on us. To, uh, I'd be putting a big whammo on you guys. So I'm not going to do that. But anyway, um, yeah, the two uh, definitely. I'll put the two in, and um, yeah, I'll, I, 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 and the five. I'm going to do it with the two and the five. We're oh. using Mystic Dan. You're hoping for that triple crown winner. No, Not I just, uh, I don't know. I could see Mystic Dan actually giving it a good try and finishing second. So okay. let's, just, let's just use this as an example, just for one second. I mean, because I don't think he's going to win the Preakness, so it's going to be a moot conversation. If he wins the Preakness and he goes to the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga, where the distance has changed to a mile and a quarter, and he wins the Belmont Stakes, is it the true triple crown or no. is there an asterisk? There's an asterisk. Why did they okay. so why did they change the distance? Because they, they can't the run a half a half race. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty bad. Yeah, they're not running at Belmont Park this that's year. That's a major it's, asterisk. It's closed for renovation. That's not so. even a small asterisk. That's a major asterisk. It's that's like that. winning the World Series if you're a Dodger fan in the COVID year. Sorry. Yeah. Don't oh, count. No, no it's it, it, it's it's like winning the World Series. Where was it? Didn't they have one World Series where there was an earthquake and they couldn't play at their home? Yeah, the stadium? Giants. The Giants. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's. I mean, you're playing in a different location, different fences. But COVID was really bad. They stayed in one stadium for seven games. <laughs> it was stupid. Yeah, and they, they played half the games. They played like eighty yeah. games. <laughs> it's <just> stupid. <laughs> That's, that's not right. baseball. That's All right. It. So that's uh, the Preakness now for our Patreon. And look, if you, if you become a Patreon member, and we're still, uh, you know, still going to be using Patreon for a while until we hit that thousand subscriber mark. So for pay oh, speaking of Patreon members, we have a new one, Ruben Jimenez. So welcome, Ruben Jimenez. And he actually has a message. Thanks, Greg. After I, you know, sent him the welcome note. I'm a big-time horse enthusiast and have been a listener for a while. I finally decided to subscribe eh, subscribe, and hear analysis on other races not offered for free. Your analysis, I don't know why he's mentioning me, but he says your analysis is not only insightful but sometimes quite funny. Yes, that's me. I love the chemistry between yourself, John, and Chad. Keep up the great work, Greg. So that's a nice note from Ruben. So, Thank you, Ruben. All right. Um, also, just some quick... Uh, messages and uh, from uh, YouTube last week. Pick the pros and ponies said, "Great job with the six hundred thousand dollar New York bred hard spun." Was that for you, Chad? That was a blow blow to yes. Chad. It's a stupid comment, and I'll say it again: it's a stupid comment. Uh, they didn't watch what happened in the race, and obviously they don't know what they're looking at. Other than that, we can move oh. on. Next. Look, I think the horse is going to be just fine. You so know, do I. I. When you. When you have a horse with an expensive price tag, they're assumed that they're going to win first time out. And sometimes it takes a, a horses a few races. Especially at a mile first out. So not an easy thing I to mean, do. I mean, Victor, Victor, listen, 
The horse is about 17 and a half hands tall. And last time I checked, Victor Wimbiamba won Rookie of the Year, and they had 14 wins on the year. So. <laughs> Robert Ruiz, great show. Thanks. Money invested sometimes breeds lack of confidence. Hot Rod Lincoln's song came to mind when you guys were describing the Derby. Okay. Did you get that? I didn't. I, I didn't. I don't get a lot of these, so that's I don't know if they're horse racing <laughs> anecdotes, but Team Bitcoin. I wouldn't count out the number one. Ho oh, this is the Peter Pan. Okay. We don't have to get into that. Um, let's see. Andy McVeigh. Uh, thank you. Only podcast I've heard that has noted MD knocking TP out. Thank you. And that, I MD. guess, was the reference uh, with the Derby finish. Oh, knocking Pletcher out. Who's MD? Oh, no. Mystic Dan knocking out Jack Phantom. Oh, well. Okay. So that was Chad's doing. There you go. Only podcast that noted it. Uh, Carl E. The inconsistency in steward calls is incredibly frustrating to most everyday players. An inquiry should have been put in this case. The fact it wasn't lends to the theory stewards are governed by more than what we see. They seem to be above it all in explaining themselves on their decisions. Also, I think Sierra Leone should have been DQ to third. Top of stretch, knocked forever young off stride. Kudos to the Japanese contingent on being courteous nice to see some of that in racing i agree with everything he said there should have been a dq even if they don't take a horse down you could still call an inquiry the public's watching you have millions of people watching on the biggest day the biggest race of the year everyone saw something happen if that was a thursday afternoon at churchill that horse would have come down but it wasn't not for anything the way the derby's run wouldn't there just be an inquiry every year? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. okay, fine. But this was right in front <laughs> of everybody. This didn't happen on the back stretch. This happened in front of everybody. And right. it was a great finish. You had three noses on the wire. You're going to tell me what Sierra Leone did to Forever Young didn't cost them a nose? Are you kidding me? Roshan Kuriakosi. Horse racing in America is a joke. Stupid <laughs> rules America has. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Roshan. Uh, let's see. Dan Rook. What was total feet traveled by Sierra Leone? I haven't seen Trackus data yet. He had to travel farthest. I had him on top of a try with 311 second and third. Tough photo. Actually, yeah, I think Forever Young yeah. traveled the furthest. Yeah, Chad, was, tra was, Sierra, was uh, Forever Young wider than him or no? Well, you know, Sierra Leone saved a lot of ground going into the first turn. Uh, we do have right. to get this. I, I, I'm going to get this information for next week's show. I, for sure, I think Sierra Leone, he went wide, but it, it, he kind of saved ground until the turn. It is the way, thing to look at. I, I don't know that he had the wide. By the way, both Sierra Leone and Forever Young ran faster sheet numbers than domestic then. One well, ran yeah, seven, I mean, look, one ran Mystic, Dan, Mystic Dan was was hugging the rail. He literally yeah, did he never the left the wood. He never left the wood. Right, exactly. All right, and then the last one is from Bill Kelly. Why are vets not part of the penalty phase of the discussion? No trainer actually prescribes medication. No, that's oh, he, listen. He's 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 a hundred percent right. He look, is right. This is something. This is a. Uh, a HISA issue, and it's a greater issue in the industry, and and I couldn't agree more. Your vet is a product of you, and it's, as much as there's the trainer responsibility rule, look, sometimes the trainer tests positive, and they're not even in the state. They don't even know, you know, what happened? an accident yeah. happened if, well, from the assistant or the groom or whatever, and the trainer gets suspended. The vet's part of the team. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I noticed, and this, this is not from the YouTube comment section. This is from the texting comment section between the three of us. Uh, John uh, mentioned that Muth scratch from the Preakness spiked a fever shipping t uh, the Maryland. And then Chad Summers sarcastically said, sure he did. Uh, and that started a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, Chad I, I don't believe he spiked the fever. That, that's just an easy way out for the trainer. Uh, I don't believe he spiked the fever either. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay. No, I think oh. he's, he might have spiked it. But yeah, this is, okay. listen, this is what happens when you ship on top of a race. 
Right. If you shift over there two weeks ago, he was never running in the derby. He was never running in the derby. Right. So why didn't they? That's a great point, Chad. If you, why if you didn't shift they over and you get sick, yeah. then you got a time to get over it. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, bye, everybody at YouTube. We're heading to our final bonus race for Patreon members only.